Hello and welcome to the vlog. The next day dawned bright and sunny. We had much ground to cover, so I went to rouse Jasmine from the dinette where she'd been sleeping. Morning, Jasmine. Good morning. How did you sleep? Uh, very well. Do you know, I was actually just laying here thinking, do you know, I might have changed my mind about dinettes. Because I slept very well. And uh, I think your dinette is less in the way than most. The oddest compliment a dinette has ever been paid. Today we'd head from the northern outskirts of Stone in Staffordshire up to and through Stoke-on-Trent. Four locks, known as the Meaford flight, immediately present themselves in quick succession to raise the canal by just over 32 feet. Jasmine was once again on windless duty while I steered the boat. Each narrow lock typically takes about 15 minutes to get through, depending on how it's set when you get there. While the boat finished rising in the bottom lock, Jasmine nipped ahead to set the next one, which was just a few yards further on. After rising in that lock, and with no other boats either coming up or going down, we let the boat sit for a while because Jasmine had spotted fine dangling fruits from the trees on either side of the lock, and she wanted to have a go at retrieving some of them to eat as we went along. She won't mind me saying she's only little, so this was a bit of a stretch. I missed it. Where did the rest go? Oh, it's just this one. Another boat arrived in the end, so we had to get out of the way, which called a halt to the damson picking. It's a short pound to lock three. into the third lock, which is tended by local youngsters in a brownies group and always has flowers in the pots alongside. And then Meaford top lock, which is deep and, as you can see, very leaky through the top gates. Now you might be thinking how dreadfully lazy I am to be merely standing on the back of the boat while poor old Jasmine is up on the top of the lock, opening and closing the gates, opening and closing the paddles and generally running around. I have checked, because I am a gentleman, and she assures me this is absolutely fine. In fact it gave her plenty of scope to get her camera out. She filmed our trip for her YouTube channel, which I've left a link to in the video description below. While Jasmine filmed the lock, I filmed her filming the lock. It's a bit like Inception, but with camcorders instead of dreams. This is what happens when video makers get together, and it's very poor of me because I should have been paying attention to the boat in case of mishap. I mentioned gate paddles as we went through stone, but here they are again. Sluices built into the gate, which let the water in from about halfway up the lock. Contrast them with ground paddles, which are built into the ground, and let water in from the bottom of the lock. That's why you always start with ground paddles, because water spewing in from the gate paddles could flood the front of your boat if you're not careful. 
We were careful though and could now look forward to two and a half miles of lock-free cruising, or about an hour's worth in real time. My hat had been pressed into service as a damson dispenser and Jasmine was chief tester of the produce. Fortified by the vitamins and goodness of the fruit, she took to the tiller. We went past the house that I will one day own, although its current occupiers don't actually know this yet, but a house with its own canal basin is surely destined for me one day. I could moor the boat just nicely in there. At Barlaston there's a convenience store, so we pulled in briefly for supplies and a lottery ticket to maybe buy that house. It's only a short hop of a mile or so, both to the next lock, and also there the start of Trentham, a suburb of Stoke-on-Trent. Pause near this bridge and you can walk to the Wedgwood Pottery Factory, though this was not on our to-do list that day. There's a railway station there, but it's due to close, apparently, with the one at Barlaston being reopened. On a slight corner, this is Trentham Lock, with an almighty rise of just under 12 feet. Go, Jasmine, get that lock set. It is like some sort of medieval fortress being in a lock. It's deep, and it's damp, and it's splashy in there, so no surprise the camera got soggy. Sound the alarm! Swan collision imminent! Collision averted. Cup of tea required. Canal or train? I know which one I prefer. There are several very low bridges in Stoke-on-Trent, as you'll see, but when I last went through here, someone had actually done some useful graffiti on this one by spraying Mind Your Head. I'm actually slightly sad this contribution to health and safety appears to have been removed. Madness, I tell you. We're coming towards the heart of Stoke-on-Trent here. Soon there would be five urban locks to negotiate. And here's the first at which we are joining a short queue. Half an hour later and we were in. Look at the size of that far sill. It is foreboding of doom. doom. Except it wasn't because we went through fine and on to the next, which involves this very, very low railway bridge. Mind your head! I don't know how many decapitations they have here, but I bet there are a few. Up, up and away with lock 39 behind us. That just left the biggest of all, the one at Etruria, the mystical land to the far north. 
it's also quite deep. And thank goodness Jasmine's up there sorting it, because I had to climb up the ladder to get out of here last time I did this, and it's very long and very slippery and somewhat unnerving. What a relief to see the sunshine and the industrial museum. That's the top lock at Stoke-on-Trent done. Now for an exceedingly sharp right turn and onto the Calden Canal, which I've never done before. This is how that turn looks. There's the top lock on the left and boats do a 170-ish degree turn to the Calden Canal on the right. You can see one just starting down it. Time to get Jasmine on board again and see how she's doing. So Jasmine, how has it been being my, basically my, my lock guru this morning? Have I worked you hard? Have I been mean? Uh, I wouldn't say mean, but like, you earn your keep. And uh, it's been fun though, it's a beautiful area. And I'm glad that you were down for some uh, stopping to pick uh, the damsons. So, I mean, you could have been meaner and been like, no, there's no stopping, we're on a mission. So I'd say you're all right. That's it for now. Cheerio.